Found it. Hi, Ruth. Hello, Reverend Brother. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. Uh, I'm okay. Running all over the country today? Or this oh, week? Just, just all over the city. Just all over the city this time, huh? Yeah. Okay. It's just handling phone calls from all over the country. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to figure out. I told Steve, I was trying to figure out what's the latest church scandal. I mean, I know this is recorded, so you have to cut this. <laughs> I was like, why is my YouTube saying there's a church scandal? What's going on? So he told me what he was saying. So I was like, oh boy. <laughs> What's that? Because I'm I guess I missed it too. Oh, something with the mega church going to a party and going to P. Diddy's party or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, that, yeah, I had been out a while. That's oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, I don't know, because I don't mm. it's like okay. I was like, well, he can go witness at the party if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of Christians that still party. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's the amazing thing about our religion. No, that one wasn't as bad as the uh, New Year's Eve thing in Atlanta. Oh, oh I thought that was, I was, huh. yeah, he had him told him to walk it off or something like that. Yeah, and play walk it out. Yeah, yeah, walk it out. Yeah, see, I don't even know the song. <laughs> and, he had, and he had the trap music playing in the with all the all of the crazy lyrics playing, he in said he. What I saw is he said he uh, used the clean version. Yeah, that yeah, just means he took the cussing out, but but, but all the was, references to drugs and alcohol were all still. There. It was all in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he was saying he has a draw for the young people, and that's what they mm -hmm. want. So that's sure, what he had to draw give the young people. You can draw them with that. He said he had 150 joint that came to Christ. I said. They might have joined the church, but I don't know how many of them came to Christ. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We don't know. We really don't know. Well, I guess hello. I guess I'm getting old. I, guess <laughs> I still think you draw that that the church draws people from the world by its difference. Not I agree with you. you can imitate the world. I agree with you. Hey, Carmen, how are you? Hi, hey, hi Sister LT. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Reverend. I mean, even when I accidentally opened it, yeah, I didn't drink out of it. I was trying to get um, Gatorade and I opened it with tea. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I agree. I, yeah, I don't I think that the church should transfer yeah. to the world to draw people in. She said hello, LT. Mm -hmm. I think that that we, I feel like uh, somebody had put in one of the chats and they were like, you know, I could have just sat in yeah, my car yeah. and did that in my car. Mm -hmm. Like if it's no different when I'm going to church, what am I going to church for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this just means we got work to do. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Even within the body. Or Bible study. <laughs> know what they're yeah. talking about yeah. yeah 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 i was trying to figure out if the catholic church does bible study i know they do catechism for the young people what from one to from first grade to eighth grade and then they have their uh, what is it their confirmation yeah but yeah, after that, yeah. all I could find was that they do a um they do have a lectionary or a booklet that comes out every comes out yearly that gives them like their lust lessons for the year. Yeah, the Pope the Pope designs all of that and sends it mm -hmm. out to all the cardinals and they pass it down to all the priests. Okay. And uh they develop their their study and their homilies for the whole year. Mm-hmm. So basically, everybody is in the same theme all of the time. You okay. know, they can change up some stuff, but they're basically following the same, uh, the same structure and the same uh, calendar. Mm -hmm. I know that, but I mean, do they do a Bible study That's like what I'm saying? They, so all of that is all of that is planned out. Yeah, but of time. somebody and, and so someone leads them. 
No, that's you know. So you may you may want to come and have a conversation with the priest or a meeting with the priest about the lesson. You'll sit down, but I I rarely rarely do they have Bible classes unless you're somebody like Father Flager who just got Catholic on the door. That's it. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> but, um, um, that is so true. Because you know, from a Catholic perspective, the Pope. Uh, whatever the Pope says holds just as much weight as the Bible. So why would you even need to study the Bible? All you have to do is listen to the Pope. Okay. Okay. Let the, you let the Pope and the priest do all the reading. You just you just go on because the Pope has just as much authority as the Bible. Probably more so because his, you know, has. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. Thank you. As the vicar of Christ, <laughs> his words are supposed to be coming directly from Jesus. So, <laughs> okay. That's that's even more authoritative than the Bible. Oh, okay. I'd rather trust the Bible than trust him. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. he died just like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah, you've there got a lot we of history have in your in your lessons, and which is good because <laughs> seeing how how these things develop, both practices and doctrine, gives us a better appreciation for what we believe ourselves. It really and it helps does. us to better understand why we believe what we believe. It really does. It really does. I mean, I I, I see that you know we know it was a process. But I mean, I had so many questions. I had I, I had so many questions. <laughs> Steve and I were up till what one night? I think I kept him up to about midnight talking about the oh, change not Steve the calendar. Midnight. I know. Huh? I know he paid the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he know talking about you know how the calendar work, calendar works, the the lunar rotation and all talking about that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I had so many questions. <laughs> yeah, once they started figuring out the scientific part of it, they realized that that they were really off. And then when they, you know, added a couple months to the calendar, uh, to a 12-month calendar as opposed to a 10, and uh, and then picking up, you know, because a day is not exactly 24 hours absolutely yeah that so, was the fun talk we had <laughs> yeah. so every four years they catch up so mm -hmm. we're, we're losing ground every year yeah but yeah. every fourth year like this year we catch up they add it right. on and add, a, add an extra day almost almost catch up and steve almost. just said almost catch up almost. right <laughs> right right yeah yeah but just interesting i mean those that happened back in 1582 and we still that's still what we're using today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i don't think they can do much you know more improvement on it unless they just went and took a complete solar chronograph and and uh every day would be exactly what you know the amount of time that it takes and of course you couldn't you really couldn't lay out a calendar because you never know how long each day would be well, and then the other side that we talked about or Steve brought to my attention was we're on this calendar, but the other side of the world, I mean, we're we're on our time zone, but the other side of the world is on a completely time, different time zone, different a different, well, different countries. They're on different time zones, which that adds into it as well. Yeah, the time zones. And then uh, like you, you know, I don't want to get into your lesson tonight. <laughs> but uh, you know, when you the the Orthodox Church uh, accepts a different calendar, yeah, Eastern. So that and that was split. That was even before the calendar, right? And the 16th century came up uh, in the 11th century when East and West split. Mm -hmm. then, then they both followed different calendars, right? And even so to when the 16th century calendar has changed, you know. <laughs> There's some subtle changes on both sides. Right. They're not the same changes. Right. So, and then, yeah, yeah, we'll get into it. Yeah. Cause then you got the third group. <laughs> yeah. 
and says, we're not going to move from the Julian. <laughs> Good sermon Sunday. I was really sorry. I had to, I don't know what happened. I got, I had my coat on walking out the door and I was like, oh my God, what is going on? Hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay. And I was like, yeah, well, okay. This is the season for it. It's yeah. up and down and then it's going to get brutally cold this weekend. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just kept saying to myself, well, I heard what's here and Steve saying, if you don't, because he, if you don't feel well, don't go. And I was like, I really don't feel well. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's the way you have to do it now, because mm -hmm. if you don't, because it's not just about you. That point, right, you know? right, right. You don't want to get anybody else. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was a good sermon. I almost felt like I was in service. It wasn't quite the same. <laughs> Good service, good songs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Good evening. 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 How are you? How's everybody? Great. Well, how about well. you? I'm well also. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Michelle. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Someone is on the Samsung uh, phone. Who is that? Me? Unmute yourself. Unmute myself. No, it's not you, Dick and Rice. No. Okay. Zaddy. Zaddy? Yes. Okay. This no, is Carolyn. This is Carolyn Roberts. I, I guess I should have been more specific. There's a bunch of a couple Samsungs. In <laughs> okay, two more minutes and we'll get started. All right. I'm trying to get everybody's name on the screen, so at least you'll know who you're talking to. Good evening, yeah. everybody. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening, Dick. Good evening. How many states does this go to, Robert? I'm, I'm wanted in a few states. <laughs> I think we're at about three or four right now. So, oh Lord, yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess, I guess they'll find me. <laughs> I guess I will put your phone number back up instead of your name. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're right now. We we have four different states on. Yeah, I see Maryland. Five different states. Yeah, Marilyn is <laughs> on. Hey, Lisa. <laughs> uh, good evening. This is Letty again. Hello to everyone. Uh, Sherry Hi, just please. called me and she said she was trying to get in, but it won't come through. Who's something that? about the mute or something that's on. Who? Sherry Whitmore. She's not showing up in here at all. Hmm. Maybe she'll let her try again. Yeah, or maybe she's using the old link. Let her try it again. Make sure she uses the one that, that the that the secretary sent out and not an old Bible class link. Mm -hmm. She was on that we wasn't she? Yeah, she was on last week, so she used the same one. So she'd be okay. So I see I see Texas, Maryland, and Texas, Maryland, and Tennessee. Who else, Reverend? You said there was four. Well, Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Huh? Oh, in Illinois, yeah. 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 All right, 705. I imagine Mississippi will get on soon before we're out. So. Uh, they had, I know one of them, they had some type of, they were doing a clothing drive today, so I don't know about the one group. Okay, sister teacher, it's all yours. Okay. Um, welcome. Hello, everyone, to Bible session number six out of our season of hope. Happy New Year to everyone. Everyone I haven't seen and talked to. Happy New Year to you. Um, you. I'm going. We're going to get started. Um, with a word of prayer. Pastor, do you mind? Not at all. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather tonight to study your word. And we thank you for those who have taken the time uh, to dig into your word, to be a part of this Bible class. We thank you for our instructor. We thank you for the course of study that you have given to us. And we pray that you would bless every person who's online, everyone who has a desire to study tonight. We pray that you would make our gathering fruitful, uh, open up our hearts, our minds to a better understanding of your word, your will, and your way. Bless our homes, our families, bless our church, and bless those who are across the country who are sharing with us. We pray that you would bless them in their several locations. Now be with us, lead us, and guide us in our discussions tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Um. Wow. Hello. I see my son's on the line. I'm glad you're safe. He's in Baltimore and they had some flooding. So I'm glad that they're all safe. Uh, but we're going to start our lesson, instruct um, our season of hope, lesson six. The title is What is Epiphany? What is Epiphany? Um, I heard Reverend say on Sunday as he was getting ready to preach, he didn't know why. Um, he let me choose the choose the lessons, and then he had to preach preach behind them. And as I was studying this lesson, I was like, I don't know why God gave me this lesson, and I gotta <laughs> try to teach it. So, what is Epiphany? This was foreign to me, um, but it was a good lesson. It's got a lot of good history in it, a lot of tie-ins in it. Um, it was really to hear on the news all the different people that were celebrating Epiphany this weekend and the activities that went around it. So we're going to get started. My handout is a little bit different from yours, um, but it's but we're going to it'll work. It'll work. So what is Epiphany? Before we get started, anybody, anybody ever had any experience with Epiphany? known somebody to celebrate epiphany how did they celebrate epiphany no okay so epiphany merriam webster defines epiphany as related to the church as a church festival in commemoration of the coming of the magi as first written in the New Testament manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles. So it's a church festival. It was commemorating when the Magi first came to the Gentiles. I put New Testament, I added New Testament to that title because we know from the Baptist perspective that we've had manifestations of Christ and God and the Holy Spirit in the Bible. If we just started Genesis 1, amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. We we see them all. So this, but this, um, that was the definition that the Miriam Wester said. It said that it was the commemoration of the coming of the Magi to the Gentiles. Uh, the scripture that that reference is now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, "Where is he that is born king of the Jews?" For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him. That is Matthew 2, Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 and 2. 
Then we get the Eastern Church. Epiphany is held in commemoration of the baptism of Christ and the manifestation of God as the three in one, the Trinity. Our scripture reference and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of water and lo, the heavens opened unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in who I am well pleased. So we've got one event, the epiphany. We have two different ways of celebrating. We've got one that's celebrating the baptism of Christ. We've got one that's celebrating the wise man. Um, additional scriptures for the baptism of Jesus are also found in Mark, Luke, and in John. The coming of the Magi is only found in the Gospel of Matthew, as we went through our Sunday school lesson two weeks ago. The Church Festival of Epiphany is also known as Three Kings Day, Theophany, Festival of Lights, Feast of Lights, and the Feast of Kings. And Epiphany, as a definition, the word Epiphany outside of the one relating to the church is a manifestation or a revelation of a divine being, a grasp of reality through something such as an event, an illuminating discovery, a realization or disclosure. The background for Epiphany and church calendar, and I realize I do not have my, I don't have it up. The early, um, let me share my screen. It's disabled, that's okay. All right, we're gonna go on. The early Christian church developed the church calendar as a go way- ahead, Go ahead and try it again. Just move back. Okay. Sorry, I don't see it coming up. There we go. Share. That's Can you it. see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. One second. All righty. Go to the next page. Excuse. Too fast, too fast. Okay, so here we are. You can see it okay? For those yeah. that are following? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The background on Epiphany and church calendar. The early Christian church developed the church calendar as a way of telling, remembering, and learning their history and reliving the story of Jesus. We can look at this as a reference of the Baptist church. We have our Sunday school lessons and they're on a three-year cycle, just as, as a reference. Um, the church calendar in the first century, Sunday was set aside as the Lord's Day. In the second century, we get Lent, Easter, and Pentecost. That's during the 200s. In the Second century is the 100s. In the third century, we get the early church leaders initiated Epiphany as January 6th. It was a period to celebrate and recognize Christ's birth. His baptism, the adoration of the Magi, and Christ's first miracle of turning water into wine. Christmas was instituted in the fourth century 336 AD. We had that in our lesson last week. So who celebrates Epiphany? Uh, Sister Coleman, you want to read for us? Okay. Who celebrates Epiphany? Epiphany is a Catholic, Protestant, Armenian religious holiday. It is one religious holiday with several remembrances yeah. and varied ways and days to celebrate. 
The Epiphany Festival and the Eastern Orthodox Church is in remembrance of Jesus' baptism and had been celebrated on January 19, 13 days after their Christmas Eve, which was January 6. January 7 was the original date chosen to celebrate Christmas, but was changed to December 25th when the Gregorian calendar was instituted in 1582. Roman Catholics, Lutherans, Anglicans, and other Western Roman churches observe the Feast of Epiphany on January 6th. For the Western Church, Rome, the Epiphany Festival primarily honors the visit of the Magi. Thank Keep you. Keep going. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, someone else wants to read the Western Church? The Western Church, Rome, changed January 6th Epiphany celebration of Christ's baptism to the arrival of the wise men and the baptism in the next Sunday. On the other hand, the Eastern Orthodox Church, Greek, combined the Epiphany celebration of the wise men and the birth of Christ to be held on January 6th. Okay. In the West, you said, wait? No, go ahead. In the West, Rome, December 25th to January the 6th are the 12 days of Christmas, Christmas to Epiphany. The 12 days of Christmas includes observ ob ob observance associated with Christ's birth. Remembrance of people from the early church, including Stephen and the babies, Herod killed, and the celebration of some saints of the Catholic Church. Amen. Amen. The song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, another volunteer. The song, Twelve Days of Christmas, uh, 1780 AD, is from children, from a children's book, Mirrored Without, how do you pronounce that? Mirth without mirth, mirth without, without, without mischief. mischief. Yeah, about mischief. The song was sung on the eve of Epiphany, January six. Children were challenged to recite the words for memory. If missed, if messed up the t lyrics, you had to do a favorite. You had to do a favor for the person who challenged you to sing the song originally as it was a mother and not a true love who was giving the gifts amen amen so the song 12 days of christmas it was just a fun song <laughs> to be sung during the time of epiphany it was sung on january 6 the eve of epiphany epiphany was Jan was originally January 7th. It was sung on that eve. And it was just a fun song, an activity for the kids to do. And originally it was not what my true love gave to me. It was a mother, what my mm -hmm. mother gave to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, fun fact, huh? Yeah. And the fact that there's the 12 days of Christmas, I just thought it was a song. Had no idea that it possibly had something to do with a religious holiday. Especially when you talk about three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge and a pear tree. <laughs> okay. Epiphany celebrations. Uh, so do we have another volunteer to read? Uh, the Epiphany celebration can include festivals, a parade of icons, blessings of water, blessings of homes, sprinkling of water, blessings on people and families, and a worship service of prayer and hymns, and the giving of gifts. The Ethiopian Orthodox Christians celebrate Epiphany on January 19th, traveling from Jerusalem to Bethlehem as a major festival. The town of Tarpon Springs, the sponge capital of the world, holds the Greek heritage festival of lights as do other water surrounded communities. They celebrate Epiphany with a parade of religious icons reflecting the gospel narrative of Christ's baptism. 
for the parade of leaders, people, and church priests leading the way to the local body of water. At the shore or pier of the waters, the priest blesses the waters and a group of young swimmers. A cross is thrown into the water. The young men dive into the water and the first to retrieve the cross receives a special blessing for themselves and their families. Anybody, any anything about that? <clears throat> Okay, we'll move on. Epiphany traditions. Epiphany traditions observing Three Kings Day and Epiphany vary and change over time. During the Middle Ages, celebrations focused on the journey of the wise men. In 1336, Italy, there were parades, plays, carnivals, and services. Some Epiphany traditions included children receiving gifts on Epiphany instead of on Christmas. Another epiphany tradition is that children would leave one shoe filled with straw on the doorstep. In the morning, the straw would be gone and the shoe filled with small gifts. King cake. King cake is, um, is a traditional treat for epiphany. It is a circular cake with one tiny baby hidden in it. The person who finds the baby is king or queen for the day didn't realize that that was related. I think that's a New Orleans. What's mm -hmm. something that they do in New Orleans, am I right? Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, okay. So it's the, yeah, it's part of Mardi Gras. Um, the Eastern Orthodox churches also have, have also called Epiphany the Feast of Lights. France has been known to call it the Feast of Kings. Here in Chicago, we had many news reports of gifts, gifts being given to children by volunteers in celebration of Epiphany. Epiphany is also a church calendar season that ends the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. It can be between four to nine sun Sundays, depending on the date of Easter. There we see that king cake that is done the day before the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. So why are there varied dates of the Epiphany celebration? The difference in dates of the same religious holiday has to do with a change in the calendar from the 46 BC Julian calendar and the 1528 Pope Gregory XIII Gregorian calendar. In the 16th century, it was discovered that major dates and holidays at that time had lagged by 10 days according to the rotation of the earth to the sun. With the Gregorian calendar, 10 days were dropped from the calendar and every four years in February, an extra day was added. This is known as leap year and is still observed today. Some churches and countries accepted the change but some Orthodox denominations have not. Therefore, the difference in Christmas celebration dates. The Gregorian calendar is the one the United States adheres to today. Some Orthodox churches do not adhere to the Gregorian calendar. They hold on to the original Julian calendar, which as of current, the Julian calendar has a difference of 13 days compared to the Gregorian calendar. They're 13 days behind us. Participants of Epiphany celebrations have shared that the festival and celebration day is a family and community event of joy, giving and receiving. A time of celebrating the birth of Christ, the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles, the baptism of Christ and manifestation of the Trinity and the revelation of Jesus's power over nature by turning water into wine. The community celebrations reflect and remember the beginning of Christ's public ministries, encouraging participants to continuously remember and reflect the gift of Christ. Questions, comments, thoughts. There's no wrong thoughts, no wrong ideas. I found it fascinating, but maybe some of you may not. <laughs> what do you think? Epiphany. Should the Baptist church be celebrating it? No well, problem. I guess it I guess it depends on um I mean, I don't have any real strong thoughts about that. What what surprised me was that people 
take the holiday and incorporate into it what is important to their denomination or or worship structure. And what I was actually thinking, I mean, because it, it moved around so much, a lot of times people who are looking for excuses to criticize the religious aspect of Christmas they always want to talk about Jesus wasn't really born on such and such a day. Well, now we see that, you know, people pretty much just kind of take what historically they, they move the date around um, uh, to accommodate their, their religious structure. And then I just went on to think about how in general people, we, we as a society move dates around because we do that with the holidays all through the year and nobody seems to object to that. It's only when you get to Jesus's birthday Mm. that people start having a fit. I mean, here we are um, when we, when we come up on into February, um, you, you know, a lot of us grew up, you know, with the school holidays The 12th was Lincoln's birthday. The 22nd was Washington. And then they decided to combine it. And then they start moving it around. They want everything to be on a Monday. And nobody has an issue with that until we get to Jesus. (laughs) And when Jesus was born, now it's important when somebody was born. (laughs) You know, so that's just kind of some of the thoughts that, that came up when you were reading all about you know, how this moves around. Mm-hmm. That was great. Excellent. You know, that, Excellent. That, that is real interesting too. And that just gives people an opportunity to say, well, I don't believe it because of that. Yeah. Not understanding the history that goes mm-hmm. along with it. Exactly. Deacon Crowley, yeah. did I hear you? I'm sorry. What you say, Dr. Love? I thought I heard you. I thought I heard your voice. No, ma'am. No. No. Okay. Sister Carolyn, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was just, the other thing I was thinking is that, you know, every once in a while we meet somebody from, from the South, like a really older person who has no birth certificate. They don't know when they were born. That's true. You know, they pick a date and they celebrate it. You're going to get a year older. It really (laughs) doesn't. Yeah, it's so it's you know it's just um, it's it. I think it's it's interesting. It's I didn't realize that there were so many variations. I know that the Greek Orthodox Church. I think they're celebrating yeah. now, Thank you. or or just either just finished or just started because I saw that on the news. Mm-hmm. And then um, the nineteenth, we're gonna have. Um, the, there's going to be a journey from Jerusalem to Bethlehem for, a, for that church is going to celebrate Epiphany on that day. Mm. Can, you, just, can you hear me? Yes, now. Okay, my, my sound is so bad, I don't know what's going on. But I, I think about we all these different denominations now, uh, the Chinese have just celebrated. We were in Chinatown one day last week, and they had this big festival going on with all these dragons and dogs and celebrating their their coming New Year. So they they have different things to celebrate, and yeah. they have changed. They have changed so many different things because we were out at the um, airport, and they had the festival of lights going on during the Christmas holiday. Mm-hmm. They celebrate the festival of lights with all these lights and all these. Uh, people dressed with lights on their clothes and lights on this, and I was wondering what the origin of the was. Now I see how it's tied into the Bible. Yep. Well, not to the Bible. It's tied. To, it's it's tied through the through the the original church. Yeah. 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 Through that Epiphany that came up. Epiphany came up before the century before Christmas did. things we don't know where it's coming from now but i see the origin of a lot of these different festivals yeah and they've been around forever longer than we even knew yeah the chinese holiday that's 
affiliated with the change in the calendar some kind of way also. <laughs> yeah, they were one of those that didn't change with the they they're still on the Julian, I believe. Yeah. Oh, they have the my husband said they have their own calendar. The Chinese have their own calendar. So when we're talking to people, sometimes we we're sharing the same words, but we're not talking the same language. We're not even talking about the same thing at the same time. What was it last week? We had that discussion about what was the um, the winter solstice. When was the winter solstice? And we were between December 21st and December 22nd. Well, if it's December 21st here on this side of the world, it's December 22nd on the other side of the world. And is it the winter solstice? Or is it? Yes. Yeah. Two different sides of the world. But, you know, just like, okay, let me put it this way. When we watch on Christmas Day and they're saying where Santa Claus is, you know, they're saying he's on, he, he may be in Norway. And we're like, could, can't be. It's December, it's still December, it's still the day before. He should not be there yet. But that's it. When we start talking worldwide, it becomes a lot more complicated or we have to, you know, think with a different mindset when we're talking about the world. Mm -hmm. I thought Sister Alti was going to say something. Okay. No, no, no. Any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Oh, I'm sorry. Pass to love. Well, you know, Sister Ruth, it's, it's interesting because if you, if you just travel to the east uh, by airplane and come back, you, you, you cross the international date line and you end up, you know, losing a whole day. So, um, wow. you know, I, I took a, 27 hour flight to the Philippines. And when I came home, uh, I was back home. I was back home before I left. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Wow. You look at it. You, you just take that and, and, uh, you know, take it over a thousand years of calendar is different. You mentioned the Chinese calendar. It's, it's estimated that it is, from four to six years ahead of the Gregorian calendar. Wow. So, uh, you know, so instead of 2024, it's 2028 to 2030. Wow. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. Any other thoughts? Yeah, Carol, Sister Carol, I thank you so much. I really, yeah, the, that people question about Jesus's birthday. You are so right. They'll question everything about Jesus, but other things that are changed, they don't seem to make as much noise about it. So thank you for bringing yeah. that up. Um, I guess what's important is that we celebrate. Um, absolutely. You know, just like the, the scripture that says, you know, one person esteems one day higher than another, and then another person esteems every Excellent. day the same. I think it's just important that we celebrate it and recognize it, whether Excellent. it's December or January or whatever. What's important is that we acknowledge and worship and understand the meaning of the day. Absolutely. Yes. That he yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Excellent. 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 Okay. So, um, so my next section is why doesn't the Baptist denomination celebrate Epiphany? The Baptist church is a result of the denominational restructuring that began during the time of the Protestant Reformation. Before the Reformation, the rules of the church exercised power over its citizen, total, complete power over its citizens. Teaching salvation and heaven were only available Waiting for my mouse to come back. <laughs> Waiting for it to come back. There we go. Waiting only available through the say-so of the leadership of the church, directing members to do good works and to pay a financial price for the forgiveness of sins and to go to heaven. <laughs> the Reformation was a call back to biblical teachings of salvation and forgiveness of sins, acknowledging the sole authority of God's holy word, the Bible, in all matters. Mm -hmm. Christ has come that we might have abundant life and eternal life. The Holy Bible is the central authority for all, and salvation cannot be earned or bought. 
Salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Anybody have any questions about that? <clears throat> I do. I do. I'm I'm looking at uh what you're what you have on the screen that you're sharing. Mm -hmm. Then I'm looking at the language of the handout. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah, and I just wanted to I just wanted to share for those who don't have a handout um the distinction, the difference between what you just read and then what it says on the handout that Sister Jameson sent. At the end, it says that uh before the Reformation, the church was the seat of power for people's lives. Teaching salvation was through the universal church, that heaven was only available through the universal church. And this is where it gets a little bit different. And that by good works, you go to heaven. And without good works and loyalty to the universal church and, appro and approval of the church, you cannot go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't say anything about forgiveness of, skin, of sin or anything like that or... Uh, uh, paying a pi financial price, it stresses more that uh, you have to have good works to go to heaven and you have to have loyalty to the universal church and approval of the church to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share that discussion. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's both. I mean, they, they believed in indulgences. That was what one of the splits was about, that you've got to pay. You know, you, you're going to pay. Not only can you pay for yourself, you could also pay for your relatives who have passed on so that mm -hmm. they get to heaven. While they, you know, they came up with purgatory. Purgatory is not in the Bible. So they came up that you you could pay. But and this the monies that they were receiving were helping to build the the financial bank of the church. St. Peter's Basilica. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was one of uh, one of the histories that I um, uh, read or have on the uh, Reformation is that when Martin Luther, he was going on a trek. So he's leaving Germany and, you know, it's very poor. People are struggling to eat and he's traveling to Germany. And when he gets to Rome, he sees all these beautiful buildings and you know how people are living. And it was like, how can this be? Mm -hmm. How can this be that they're living like this and back in, in Germany and all the lands that I've, tra I've traveled through, we've got poor, we've got the peasants. So he starts thinking. And so eventually he comes up with the and, you know, hearing about the indulgences, seeing how, you know, you're taking money out of the poor people's pockets. And he's he's like, uh, -uh this he, he's questioning this. He's reading some of the things from other writers that have come up with, you know, how God is a merciful God and his grace. And so, but, you know, he has questions. So he hammers the 95 thesis on the church, on the ch church, the 95 thesis on the church door, because he has questions about why are we doing this? This is, it's by faith. It's by, it's by faith mm -hmm. that we, that we're saved. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you want to clear that up for him? <laughs> no, I think he cleared it up pretty good. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the heart of the, of the reformation. And that's, that's what causes the split. And uh, as Luther does it, uh, he he still wants the uh, the nation state to have more say so in the religious beliefs and practices of the people. Uh, and then, of course, there are others who say no. And so you go from there to John Calvin, who is less strict than Luther, and then you get Zwingli and and others uh, who you know become more liberal. And they say, we don't want the state, we don't want the government to have anything to do with our belief structure that 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 is between the person and God. And you get to the point where you get to the Baptist church that says we have no hierarchical authority uh, above the local pastor. And that local pastor comes out of the congregation of the of of believers so that there is no separation between clergy, you know, I'll put that in quotes, between clergy and lay people, that all of us are our brothers and sisters in Christ, and some are called for different work. 
and and we honor and respect the work that they've been called to and give them you know the respect that the leadership ought to give it but it doesn't give them any any i guess closeness to god that the other person doesn't have all right so you don't have to come to the pastor to, to do all the praying for you you can pray for yourself amen all right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's good when your pastor does pray for you, Amen. <laughs> right? but, yeah. uh, you know, but you don't have to wait until Sunday morning or when you can get an appointment, <laughs> get out on your knees and pray. Amen. And so that's, that's how, it's one of the reasons why the Baptist church does not do all of those kinds of festivals is because most of those festivals are, are written into the programmatic calendar of that national church. And we don't accept a national uh, or a church calendar outside of our own church. It's interesting. You can, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, the the uh, the old established Baptist churches or so the first Baptist churches. All right. <laughs> but uh, that's one of the things you see when you see, you know, we'll vote on the calendar. We'll vote on a church calendar, <laughs> right? And if you want to have a program after that, you have to have a conversation uh, and then put it with the pastor so that you can get it added to what's already been voted on by the church because we don't have that imposed upon us by anybody else. We do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So if Lilydale said we want to celebrate Epiphany, we could celebrate Epiphany. <laughs> all right we could do it october 31st if we wanted to it doesn't matter. yeah all right yeah. It's, it's what we decide as a as a local body uh, mm -hmm. that we want to do and it's not imposed upon us from the outside so that's that's a that's a baptist baptist doctrine you got a question from brother curry yes yes brother curry you're on take yourself off mute good evening happy new year also happy new year um it, it seems to me, though, aren't a lot of these things rooted in pagan paganism and they're not, this, they're not biblical or biblically based, these celebrations that we're referring to and festivals? Some, yeah, some of them are. I wouldn't say all of them are, but, but I think all of them that either have some vestiges of paganism in them or they are a construction of the early church to avoid persecution because the early church does not condone or participate in the pagan rituals. And so, for instance, some of the timing, we just come out of Christmas, but but the timing of Christmas, if the, you know, the scripture says that, that on the night that Jesus was born, shepherds were in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. Well, you can't do that in the winter. In the winter time, the sheep are in the sheepfold. The only time that sheep, that shepherds keep watch over their flocks by night in the field is during spring and summer. So we know that Christmas is in, is, well, Jesus is born in the springtime or in the summertime, most likely in the spring. So he's probably more closely born his birthday is probably closer to East, Easter. Easter passage. <laughs> yeah, than, than it is to where we celebrate it. But because as 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 uh Dr. Ruth said some time ago, the you know, the uh celebrations of uh Saturnia and all of that stuff by the Roman government in order to avoid persecution, because if you didn't celebrate when when Caesar said celebrate, mm -hmm. you were in danger of being thrown to the lions. And so the Christians say, well, we will have our own celebration and we will be celebrating while you're celebrating. We are just not celebrating what you're celebrating. Does that clear up your question, Brother Curry? Um, somewhat, but I, I was still thinking that a lot of those Festivals are still based in in in, in pagan worship and, and sort of idolatry, not really based on uh, the word of God. Is are you referring to Are you referring to Epiphany? Uh, that that's one of them. Okay. 
Yeah, and some of the others that have been mentioned. Yeah, no, I'm I'm actually agreeing with you, Billy Curry. I'm saying that is true, uh, with the caveat that there are some things that come out as a, um, uh, you know, a coping mechanism for to for survival in the midst of a pagan culture, but a lot of it does come up out of pagan religion, uh, particularly a lot of the Catholic, you know, if the Roman government takes on Christianity as the as the uh, state religion, then you're going to, you know, it's almost impossible not to get some some of the state rituals and, and pagan practices interjected into it. And so, uh, again, that's one of the reasons for the Reformation. It is a it is a reforming of that to get to break away from from uh, those things that were developed out of uh, kind of this this easy uh, relationship with paganism. And then we also remember that God makes all things new. He changes us. He changes us from the inside out. He changes us from sinners to able to, to say that we we are we are saints. He washes us from our sins. He takes everything and he makes everything new. And that's what it may maybe it was based on a pagan holiday, or if it was based on a holiday. If God has said that now this is for my glory and my honor. It's for his glory and his honor. And we have to say, yes, God is able. He can take anything. If he can make a donkey speak, he can take a holiday that someone was using for their own glory or idolatry, and he can make it for his good. He made the day. We, um, yeah. Yeah. But we do find when when, when they, those kinds of things happen, you, what you will find is there there will be some biblical uh foundations in them uh in in those i would say in a baptist so i can't, i don't want to speak for every christian denomination but in a baptist uh recognition of those uh certain holidays you will find uh some scripture in a you know now uh, you know we are like thanksgiving is 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 a particularly civil uh holiday but we will worship and give god thanks any day and so so to take thanksgiving or the day that the country says we give thanks that's not an issue for us right because that's normal that's a part of our normal practice is to give him thanks and so uh it, it's that kind of that kind of mindset and then when we do it we're not thanking him for you know for the for the corn that the Indians gave and taught the uh, Puritans how to how to plant, you know, we're we're thanking him for other things, and so uh, I think that's the kind of growth uh, of some of those things. Some of those things do do start off, I think, in uh, in some pagan uh, rituals, but I think as you see them practiced in the church, they're they're practiced from biblical uh, principles. And we have to, part of the Bible study is to learn how to distinguish between the two. Amen. Question. Um, would it be um, a legitimate comparison to think about when Paul was going through looking at all of the gods and there was the one unknown God? And of course, all that would is paganism worshiping all these gods and he took that unknown god and said this is the one that i declare to you so he actually took their practice of acknowledging the unknown god and lifted it up to them as the one and only god mm -hmm. yes it is great yeah, yeah. excellent excellent Excellent. I thought about our scripture that we use for two weeks of the Ezekiel 36, 24 to 27, where it says, mm -hmm. I will sprinkle, sprinkle clean water on you and you'll be clean. Your filth will be washed away and you will no longer worship idols and I will give you a new heart and I'll put a new spirit in you. That was the God makes all things new. Mm -hmm. He cleans up things that 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 were not for his glory and he 
that he turns each and every one of us for his glory, that we will be his witnesses, that we would go and tell others about who he is. And others will look at our lives and be like, are you sure her or him? I remember when, and now look at him. <laughs> he cleans, he, he can take anything and change it for his glory to use it for his purposes. Even a pagan holiday. Mm -hmm. He allows things to happen so that we can see how it can be changed mm -hmm. and how he can get the glory. Yep. Amen. Um, thank you, Brother Curry. Good question. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sister Jackie? I don't think we can hear you. Anything for his glory. Amen. Amen. All righty. So, any, it is by grace, God's unmerited favor, that we are saved. And back to the handout, we're delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your, our faith. This salvation is not of ourselves or of our doing. It came not through our own striving, but it is the gift of God. It's not of works. It's not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do. It is what Christ has done on the cross and rising again. So no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. The book of Ephesians chapter two tells us at verse 10, we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works, tell of the salvation Christ gives, which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Verse 11 tells us at one time, you, we were Gentiles, we were heathens. We were separated, living apart from Christ, excluded from all part in him. We were strangers with no share in the messianic promise. Verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were so far away, through, by, and in the blood of Christ have been brought near. Verse 14, for he himself is our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He has made us both Jew and Gentile, one body, and has broken down, destroyed, abolished the hostile dividing wall between us. That's Ephesians 2, um, verses 10 through 14 from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Um, the handout, I believe, has, if someone can read the handout, I think it has uh, 2 Timothy 2, verses three, 13 through 16. It says, every scripture is God-breathed, given by his inspiration, and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin, for correction of error and discipline and obedience, and for training in righteousness, that is, in holy living and conformity to God's will and thought, purpose, and action, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, well-fitted, and thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that's Second Timothy 3, 16 through 17, the Amplified Version. Amen. Amen. So then Romans 1 and 17 says, for in the gospel, the gospel is the good news of the life, death, resurrection of Christ, a righteousness, which is right standing with God, ascribed, impute, giving, we are given credit for, it's revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. And as is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. So any questions before? Because we're coming to the conclusion. Questions, thoughts. 
So our epiphany, our revelation, our grasp of reality, our illuminating discovery is that the Lord opens the eyes of the blind and gives salvation through his son and the power of the Holy Spirit. As, as, as God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit witnesses, Isaiah 43, 10 and 21 tells us he chose us that we might believe in him, that we might know him, that we might remain steadfast in him and understand that he is God and that before him there was no God form, neither shall there be after him. No one can deliver us out of God's hand. No one can reverse his salvation towards us. He is Lord, the Holy One, the creator of Israel, our King. He mm -hmm. makes a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters. Today, he is doing a new thing. He formed us that our lives should praise him. Praise him. Give glory to him by living for him. Be his witness Share the reality, the illuminating discovery, the epiphany of the salvation, protection, gift of eternal life given by our true and living God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. So that's our epiphany. That is our epiphany. And that that's God a reason is. to celebrate. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Any questions, closings, thoughts? You have the references. No? Okay. Well, if all minds are clear. I want to say something that I'm sure uh, we all can agree to. Dr. Love, what an outstanding job. You really Amen. made this really made this come to life. And uh it's it's just been wonderful. Thank you so much. Bless you. Amen. Happy to glory. Yeah. Okay. You've done a fine job. Let's pull one on you, Deacon Crowder, like you did on up to us. Which Dr. Love you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> There's two of you there. <laughs> Yeah. Good thing Joy's not on the line. Right. Every three of us, right? <laughs> oh, and she's Thomas now, so. You know, it's funny because I went to Episcopalian grammar school in the Catholic high school, and I still didn't know what all this stuff was. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, I didn't really come out, particularly in high school, I don't remember any type of uh, Catholic doctrine. I mean, the doctrine that I know is to have, just comes from living and, and you know, Bible study. But in terms of all of the individual celebrations and whatnot, I don't recall them being explained, and I wasn't curious enough to find out what they were. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you I, would... I, give, I give special letters to, to all of the young people in our church who go to Catholic schools. So mm -hmm. that they can get out of the catechism <laughs> and let them know that they can come to their own Bible class at their own church. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Yeah, I remember, Pastor, you gave one to me for my kids when they were still in the Catholic school. Well, I taught at a Catholic school, and I'm going to tell you, they didn't have any. We were mostly lay people, so they they didn't have anybody to teach uh, that stuff. No, so the the priest didn't have time to come in and teach. So they the kids the Catholic kids didn't get too much anyway, even if you were Catholic. And and again, you come back to the point we mentioned before: if the if the words of the Pope overrule whatever a priest might teach out of the Bible, right. then you know it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to teach the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, that's that's oh true. I'm so well. All righty. Well, next week will be our last class for this session. We will be talking about the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, a good place to read would be Ezra eight and one. 
Um, got Leviticus 23, I'm pretty sure. Let me look at my sheet and see what I put on the sheet, though. You said Ezra, no Ezra 8 and 1? Yeah, start at Ezra, the 8th chapter, and just read the 8th chapter of Ezra. They were returning, and they had, in there, they talked about those celebrations. But okay. actually, when you get to Leviticus, that's when they give you the actually feast names. I'm looking mm -hmm. for my handout. Sorry. It is Leviticus 23, verses 33 to 44. Numbers 29, verses 11 to 40. And then Luke 2 and 7. Okay, Luke 2 and 7. Leviticus 23, verses 33 to 44, and Numbers chapter 29, verse 11 to 40. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the Feast of Tabernacles. Ezra also? Ezra 8 was a good one. That's where I, I really, yeah, Ezra 8. If you have time, it's just good. It's good. Yeah. And just to give you an eye, just a little, little, the Feast of Tabernacles was going on when it had just closed when Hamas bombed Israel. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. It was ending. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Um, if nothing else. We are going to close with the word of prayer. Master, I don't know if you want to close this out or if you want me. Or... Well, let's, ask, let's ask Deacon Crowder to close. Amen. Father God, it's in the precious and perfect name of Jesus that we thank you for this gathering of believers tonight. God, we thank you for our instructor. We thank you for our pastor. And God, we thank you for having a church that is a teaching and preaching church, thank church, you, where we learn more about how to serve you, where we learn more about how to be the men and women of God that you have us to be. So God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to learn. We ask your blessing on our church family, God, you know, every situation that everybody's going through. So we give it to you, God, knowing that you are able to do above anything we could imagine. So we give it to you, God, and we trust your will in every situation that we have. We pray, God, that as we are dismissed from this learning hour, that we are never, ever dismissed from your holy presence. Wow. It's in Jesus' name that I pray and ask it all. Jesus. Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good